welcome. Let's give him a round of applause. So how are we doing, everyone? Good. Good. Thank you. So yes, my name is Leonard Clifton. Um, created my three book series, The Last Prince of Lances Chronicles. It all started with book one. In 2012, so it basically came about one day I was watching Twilight and it hit me. I said to myself, I didn't see enough black or multicultural black protagonist characters in books or films. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna make one up. And uh, the Lantis story always been with me for, I guess, forever. Uh, I was named after Leonard Nimoy, you know, Spock from, Spock from Star Trek. And he had a show years ago when I was a kid, it was called In Search Of. It was talked about In Search Of Atlantis. So when I started writing a story, and once it, was, once it was completed, I had an editor in New York who was interested in it. But when they let the editor go, I decided to self-publish it. And let me tell you, self-publishing is hard because you literally, you're, 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 you're your own boss. You're the publisher, you're the marketer, you're the distributor, you do it all. So I learned a lot through trial and error. So this is the first publishing uh, event I had. I had a beautiful Shangri-La Hotel in Santa Monica. If you're from Los Angeles, you would know where Shangri-La is located. So that was the first event I had that was very successful. But still, I didn't know really what to do uh, with the book series. Well, with the, with the original book. Um, so as years kind of went on, a few years later, I had an opportunity to have a book signing at Barnes & Noble at the Grove here in Los Angeles. So as I mentioned before, this, it's crazy how the universe works. I think I mentioned uh, Leonard Nimoy. I was named after Leonard Nimoy. So my book signing was the next day after William Shatner. You all heard of Captain Kirk, right? Star Trek? So you see his banner next to my banner. That's William Shatner there, that's, that's me there. Uh, friends and fans that came to support the book series. So after I had that book signing, that was in 2016. So from there, my mentor, he was pretty big. He worked on a show called Soul Train. I'm not sure if you heard of Soul Train. It used to be a Saturday show, where, a dance show, but he also used to promote for Prince, Michael Jackson. So he told me, all right, Leonard, this was great. Now you have to do Comic-Con. I'm like, Comic-Con? What is Comic-Con? So when I did my research on Comic-Con, like, oh, you have to create these, these cosplay characters with how you think the characters look from the book series. So I'm like, okay, now I have to create the characters from the book. So this was the first Comic-Con I did in 2016. So basically, here's the synopsis of the book. So it starts by Alan King, he's an unassuming black teenager living in a blue-collar family in Miami, Florida. After finding a magical crystal necklace, he discovers that he's actually a Lantean hybrid prince. Now, along with a beautiful Greek goddess, this is the Greek goddess Athena in the book series, his orphan best friend is Zanny uncle. Ellen helps keep the earth safe as he fights against his mortal enemies in an attempt to restore his kingdom, the lost city of Atlantis. So this was very successful for me, not knowing anything about creating wardrobe and anything, that, that kind of thing. I do come from an acting background. So the person I hired created this. So this kid, Kevin, he was at the time 18, a little skinny kid. That's me to the right, um, King Leon's. This is uh, Athena, as I was saying in the book series. She's a, she's a socialite, she's a Greek goddess, so she helps Alan on his journey to become King of Atlantis with his friends Jake and Francisco. And the book is very diverse, it's very multicultural. So now, from book one, I decided now it's time to travel around the world. So I hired a screenwriter from the show, you all heard of Breaking Bad? So I hired a screenwriter from Breaking Bad 
uh, this lovely lady. So when she did that, I said, okay, you know what? Now it's time for me to travel like the characters in the book. So I added more content to the book series. So this is me in Sydney, you know, Sydney Opera House. This led me in the Great Barrier Reef. And that's me actually uh, on a helipad in the Great Barrier Reef. So I use social media to let people know what I was doing. So that's how I kind of started slowly building my social media audience when I started traveling around the world. So this is now, I'm in Africa, Greece, Hawaii, literally the book series is global. So when I showed you the slide, when the Great Barrier Reef, it talked about the effects of climate change. I died with a marine biologist. So I documented all of that into the book series. So now when I go to Africa, so the character, Alan, he rides dolphin whales and sharks. So I can't ride a great white shark. So what's the best, next best thing? It goes cave dive, diving with him. So I did this in uh, South Africa. Where you, you guys seen Shark Week Discovery Channel? That's exactly where I was in Africa. And the first dive, this is what happened. That shark was about five tons. It literally, when it hit the cage, it just rattled. It was fun. A lot of my friends think I'm crazy, but that was one of the best times I had in my life. And coming out of the cage. This smile on the camera, just to prove you're still alive. <laughs> so obviously I'm still alive, right? <laughs> if I wasn't alive, I wouldn't be able to complete the book series. So um, this is one of the most amazing experiences, like I said, I ever had. And you, you see that I have the crown, like king of the mountains. That's Taylor Mountain. It's, a, it's one of the eight wonders of the world. They actually shot Black Panther on this mountain, too. I did not know that until I was in Cape Town. Uh, and one of the uh, people who worked, who worked, um, worked at this, the site where you, know, you take the cable car up, she told me that um, Ryan Coogler was there like a year before. Um, scouting the shoot part of Black Panther. So the, the slide down to the left, that is in Greece. That is in Santorini. So I was looking for locations for I wanted my Greek goddess Athena, what her homes to be. So it happened to be in Santorini, Greece. And once again, this is all for social media because I wanted people to see what I was doing. And basically, I just want to inspire young people like you to dream big. If I can do it, you can do it. I'm going back a couple of slides. Here, young adults. This book is catered for, for you guys. So it was written for basically kids from eighth grade to you know high school. I mean. The fans are like 60. I have from 12 year olds to 60 year olds fans of the book. Okay, let me fast forward. Okay, now after that, the, the book series was created. As you can see on Amazon, I created the, the three book series. So this is book two. The last book series, book three, I think it was Quest to Save Atlantis. Uh, so a lot of this was book three. I, I went to Brazil for that. So like I said, the book is global. And Comic-Con. I did Comic-Con quite a few times. I'm invited again. Actually, uh, one of my friends just called me this morning. He wanted badges. He wanted to actually be in this documentary. He's connected to, you guys see a show on Netflix called Squid Game? Yes, he's connected to those producers, so they want to interview me for their documentary. One of the guys who's connected to, um, to, to those producers and K-pop. He's a really big K-pop producer, so they want to add me towards that documentary. Because, like I mentioned before, the book's very diverse. It has black, Latinos, Asians, Native Americans. It's, it's, 
is a global melting pot. So this is the last Comic Con I did, the last two. So the first one you see, like I mentioned marketing, that's actually me in cosplay. And they call, they named me the sexiest cosplay. I'm like, really? I'm, I'm a nerd. <laughs> so that was the best free marketing I ever received. That's like over a half a million people. They picked me out of maybe 10 people. Has anyone been to Comic Con, by the way? Comic Con San Diego is a mecca. That's where it all started. So that picture there, out of half a million people, I was chosen. So that was the best marketing that I ever received. The last Comic Con I did was this one recently, 2011. I mean, no, I'm sorry, uh, November 2021. So it's the same kid you saw, the skinny kid from 2016. Now look at him, he's a little bit bigger. Uh, so I'm thankful they invited me again. Uh, to attend Comic-Con. Another thing that's very important is social media word of mouth. So I have uh, my beautiful girlfriend is with Barnes & Noble Grove. They promote the book. They recently promoted it last month with Matthew McConaughey's wife's book. And um, they promoted it again this month they have a new kind of section of like Greek mythology, because the book is, is Greek Atlantean mythology, modern day. So they, they promote it again, which I'm really thankful for. And the actresses you see, they weren't in a merch. So uh, one girl, she's wearing a mask. And Paola, she has the book. She's, she's, she's gonna be a really big, successful actress in the future. So look out for her name. So I'm thankful that that she loves the book, she wants to be Athena, actually. Um, so that's the best type of marketing you can receive with people who love, love what you have, and they will promote it for free, if they really like it. They'll put it on their Instagram. I think Paola has like 200,000 followers. And Alexa, she has about, I think about 6,000 followers. Another big thing, branding with celebrities. I'm sure you know what the guy on the left, this is Dr. Strange. Been in a coming batch. I just see I'm wearing my TLPA shirt. That's on my online website. Same with Halle Berry, she supports the book. Sandra Bullock supports the book. I'm in cosplay with Kevin Hart. There's another way to brand yourself. And that's Andrew Garfield. Uh, let's see here. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. The only Prince Atlantis. That's Sandra Bullock. You may not recognize her because she's wearing a mask. Especially during that time of uh, the COVID event I was at, we all had to wear a mask. So I basically I gave the book to her son. She has adopted black son. I told her I wrote the book for her, for her son, and she graciously really, really helped me in the marketing with saying the only Prince of Atlantis. And this is, uh, you may love, you may hate him, but that's Will Smith. To find the world. Well, thank you. Thank you, Will. So Will has a copy of the book. The Andrew Garfield. So you see the guy with the, with the mask hand, thank you. He's wearing a mask. This is book cover two. So that's how I market my brand. And surprisingly today, I did not have my mask. <laughs> so I had to grab one. <laughs> um, so those are some of the things I've, I've done to market uh, the book series. To find the world. Thank you. Thank you. There's more uh, celebrity marketing branding. Uh, got to left me never heard of. His name is Carl Kanai. He's the first guy who started hip hop clothing, fashion. So the first person who actually wore his clothes was Tupac. I work with Tupac. Uh, we have also Damon John, Shark Tank. He's a fan of book, Rich Paul. I'm sure you heard of Rich Paul. He's LeBron James' agent. This is um, Nelson Mandela's grandson. Have any of you seen Bring It On, the, the first Bring It On movie? That's me. I'm in the original Bring It On. 
So I read my, and that's Tristan Dunst, uh, my co-star. So I saw her recently. Peyton Reed, he's the director. He directs all the Ant-Man movies now. So the reason why I wore that shirt, this movie was a big influence on the book series. Because it talks about high, things high, you know, high school students go through. So there's, there's a football player in the book series. There's a cheerleader in the book series, kind of like a Gabriel Union. So uh, Peyton, he knows very well about the book. This is me. This is Elijah Dusku. Uh, Bring It On is still one of the best experiences I ever had in my life. There's more with uh, Harvey Levin, uh, Ben Stiller, Lil Rel, um, the original, anyone seen the, the original Power Rangers series? Probably not, yeah, you're a little, <laughs> a little outdated. So this is the original Black Power Ranger right there, my friend. But I'm wearing, my, I'm wearing the book cover two shirt. So I always market myself with my brand when I'm next to celebrities. And it helps get you noticed. And of course, I can't forget Kenneth Branagh. He just won the Oscar recently. And he was making the points on me. I, I, I came in love with Shakespeare because of that man. Much to do about nothing when he casted Denzel Washington. I met him at the Academy Museum. Ben Stiller, I met him at another event. So followers of social media. That's, so for the book page, uh, I have right now about 8,000 followers. I need to work on that a little bit more. Facebook, I don't, I'm not on as much as I should be. 1,000 followers. Uh, LinkedIn, I have about 2,000 followers. LinkedIn is really very professional. Uh, you can connect with a lot of industry people on LinkedIn. Pretty much if they're on LinkedIn, they're pretty, they're pretty legit ma majority of the time. Uh, so this is all, this is uh, a vendor's booth I had for an NFT event. You all know what NFTs are? Non-fungible tokens? That was a non-fungible token event. So basically this has all my merch, my books, which is connected to NFTs. And this is actually an NFT jacket. From book cover two. And my, my uh, NFTs are on OpenSea. This is uh, TikTok. Everyone, I'm sure y'all have done TikTok videos. You're on TikTok. So this is, once again, Barnes & Noble with the Grove. They have a section for a book talk. And the book series is in that section. And this is what they promote. This is what I did a promotion. Grab your signed copy of Leonard Clifton, author of The Last Prince of Atlantis Chronicles, available at Barnes and Noble at The Grove in Los Angeles. Hail Atlantis. Once you read the book series, you know what the Hail Atlantis uh, theme's all about. That's the Atlantean Warrior salute I got from Kobe. Rest in peace, Kobe. Grab your signed copy. Now, this is my online store for all my merch. You see, like Benedict Cumberbatch, I'm wearing the shirts, Halle Berry. So that's the online store that would take you to everything that's connected to the book series. From Niz wearing uh, one of the shirts of the Greek goddess Athena. These are the sneakers, uh, book one. So right here, you see I have the sneakers tote bag for kids, uh, hoodies, beach towels right now in summer, sandals, and for little lanterns, little babies, there's merch. This is all part of the book series. This, this, the ancillary product. Now these are the NFTs that is created. Another great thing about NFTs, you can do so many things with it. I actually given away uh, shoes and books on Skid Row. And so you see this says Rich Row. We actually raised money to go to Skid Row, give out food, clothes, and that was another way I can brand my merchandise with my books and the merch, giving back. It's very important to give back. So 
The Greek goddess Athena sneakers is an NFT. And that's it right there. That's an NFT. So that's another great way to market as, uh, your brand on TikTok, as you know. before my NFTs are on OpenSea so on the website everything is connected to all the links to the clothes the books uh, my interviews I've had so this is on Skid Row as I mentioned before it's connected to the NFTs so I'm giving away the shoes you can see and books I was very very inspired that so many people was like, well, thank you so much for coming out, giving back. People literally go back to their tents reading the book series. I had a little tear in my eyes, like, wow. I never thought I could reach people like, you know, good, there are a lot of good souls who are, a lot of good people living on Skid Row, they just had a hard time. And, you know, I pray that a lot of them bounce back. We all go through adversity, but it's very important to give back. This, uh, my book series at California State University Northridge, hopefully it'll be at UCLA in the future. The first Afrofuturism class they created is for this book series. And this is a STEM program, also the book is in a STEM program in Tanzania, Africa. So this was the first presentation we did with students from CSUN and kids in Tanzania. Book one, as I mentioned before, it talks a little bit about the effects of climate change. Uh, it talks about some technology, um, some of the, the armor. Like, you know, you heard of vibranium, you know, from Black Panther. There's, there's like that type of technology as mentioned in uh, the last Prince of Alliance's Chronicles, the STEM program. So my marketing. So pretty much 75% of my marketing is online and 25% is offline. So the offline is what you see with the Comic-Con, maybe Benedict Cumberbatch, Halle Berry, um, all those things. But then it's online once I post those pictures and videos up. And that's what helps me continue to grow my brand with the marketing. So this is my website, LeonardClifton.com. Um, so it has the links to I'm my, my IMDB page. It shows everything, me working with Steven Spielberg, working with Tupac, Bring It On. And so far, OpenSea, there's, like I mentioned before, my interviews I've done, videos, like me giving back on Skid Row, et cetera. So this little book, I never imagined would take me around the world being a STEM program in Africa, it's part of Afrofuturism class at California State University Northridge, and I'm right now I'm here at UCLA talking to all of you. So thank you for uh, having me. So floor is up. Does anyone have any questions? How long did it take you to write your first book? The first book, literally, I was from home for six months, 12, to sometimes 20 hours a day, literally, for six months. So the book, the original book was really big. And when I presented it to the, the editor in New York, she really liked it, but when they let her go, I said, you know what, I'm gonna do it myself. And now I kind of know why Nipsey Hussle became very, very successful because he did not give up his rights. I, I turned down deals. The deals, a lot of it was bogus. For example, I had one publishing company was like, when I present this deal, it looked pretty good when I read through the fine print. For example, a documentary. I have a documentary, so that's the reason why I'm recording right now. This is part of my documentary. They wanted half of that. I'm like, are you kidding me? I travel around the world on my own dime, and you gonna take half of what I created? I'm like, nope. Next person called me, 
like oh, do this and that. So I have I have really good friends and uh, who are entertainment lawyers. They give me pro bono, you know, help. They're like my no, not legit. And they still call me. They still constantly call me. I have to like literally before, upon a ring. I hear a voice or kind of like oh, okay, they're trying to sell me. I just hang up because I don't have time for it. Um, who's next? Next question. Yes, sir. What was your biggest? What was the biggest challenge you had to overcome in your entire process of either achieving the fame for your novels or writing them? Having the time just sitting down and putting together the plan that I had for it. That's the most important. That's the most time consuming. Just having the time because there's so many distractions um, from your you know your friends want to hang out to. You want to watch the football game, baseball game, basketball game, whatever. So you have to just make time for yourself and just do it. Right, right now I'm also if the now this book is in development to turn to a film, so I'm working on that right now um, for it to turn to a movie. Yeah. Yes. Um, do you do like everything yourself, or do you have like a team around you? That's the, yes, I do everything myself. I'm gonna eventually now. <laughs> Hire a team because it's so you don't have time, so much time in the day. To, that's the thing I hate. It's so tedious to post on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, all these other social media platforms. It takes so much time. It's so it's so tedious. And to be honest, if I had a team right now, my my father was probably grown up a lot more, grown more. But it's always been about. I already knew I had a movie in my mind before I even wrote the book. I wrote it as a movie. I wrote it as a movie, and 10 years later, now that's slowly now coming to fruition. It was in development. But yes, if you can get a team, have a team. And actually, I might probably have some work like intern or pro bono, because as this continues to grow, they, they can work in the company. And I guarantee this, I have a billion dollar franchise. What was your biggest inspiration? Like, why, what made you not give up in these six months? Because I want to inspire. I want to inspire. Little black boys look like me when I was a kid. I didn't see myself in the books I read growing up. So I wanted to really inspire people, just in general, to, big, to dream bigger. And that's what kept me going. I know I'm someone. Yes? Um, when you first like, got the idea, did you think it was like, just for fun, or did you know that it was going like, to do as well as it ended up it was, it was just for fun. Literally, like when I started writing and I was rereading what I wrote, um, I would, it was like, I go through the highs and lows of the emotions of, I would cry, like, through certain s scenes of, of the book story. Um, cause this book deals with everything you, everyone goes through right now. Mental health, teen suicide, pregnancy, pregnancy, you name it. But it's all in a sci-fi fantasy world, all sublimely written. Yeah. Um, so you're traveling, like, before you published the book? I did the opposite. Because you can pretty much Google everything online, but I have, I, I'll take that back. I have done some traveling, so Brazil, I already been to, I already been to the Dominican. But before I wrote the book, I wasn't really sure what I was going to add to it, but it, it worked out perfectly. So when I blended that in, when I did my research on like the Zeus character in the book, who narrates book one, the Athena character, yeah, I just did a lot of research online, but when I hired the screenwriter from Breaking Bad. That's why I said, you know what? I want to do a documentary, a social media documentary. That's why I decided I want to travel around the world so people can see that actually I did it myself. And this is like how big and vast the story is. Can you um, talk about like the outline of your book and how, like how many times you maybe had like a rough draft of it? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, the outline is about as long as this book. <laughs> uh, I had re rewrites and drafts probably at least 50 times. Yeah, and, and rewrites. Even the, the second book, um, when it was published, some things I didn't like, I just changed it. But if someone would have read it, they wouldn't notice the difference between book one and book two because it still blend in perfectly. Who's next? Yes. Um, the connections of With, like, other people. yeah 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 one well, one of my good friends uh, his name is Alpha Manyema he has a foundation called Jinko 
check out gcall.org, but he does charity, but his, it's in Nigeria. And his, and, and how often grew his charity is kind of how I kind of organically grew my following, following through, I met a lot of people through him, like Benedict Cumberbatch like supports him, Oprah supports him. Um, so I kind of follow his blueprint just a little bit. That's another thing, guys. Like, you have to find somebody who's really good at what they do because you got you want to find someone's better than you because you'll be kind of stagnant. You could always be better than than where you are. So I kind of looked at his platform a little bit and I kind of follow that model. But even though it's totally separate than what I've created, but uh, the connections I already had from the acting, um, I've been fortunate when like the events you saw, like Will Smith, Andrew Gorefield. I was invited to all those events. So those connections that I received was just, um, I'm very grateful for it, if that makes sense. You said you're a background in acting, right? Yes. How did that affect the way you like, wrote your book? Your, your, uh... Oh, it, uh, it affected a lot. Um, I read a lot. I read a lot of Shakespeare, read a lot of plays, you know, scripts. Um, it affected a lot. Like I said, Bringing On was a big influence on the book um, series with, with the high school football, like um, cheerleader drama. So I love acting. It wasn't for acting, I probably never would have written a book because I wrote the book as like, a, it was a movie in my mind when I wrote it. So that's one thing I love from acting. Uh, it really, the being, the, the being actor for one, you have to read. <laughs> you have to read the script, you have to memorize things, sometimes research. So. The acting background really helped, and it was a book that I read, it was called The Artist Way. Um, before I even started reading, or started writing, that book helped too, because it talked about morning pages, so like when you wake up, you don't even think, you just started writing, kind of like what you feel in your mind, so that kind of helped prepare me before I knew I was gonna be an author. I actually, I didn't know, it was, it was part, um, what I mentioned before, like when I saw Twilight, that's why I said, you know what, I wanted to change, like like Harry Potter, I think Harry Potter is cool, but I call this the real Harry Potter, because it, it really deals with the things you go through with the mental health, uh, suicide, drinking, and all those things in the sci-fi world. I just really wanted people to see sci-fi, uh, young adult books from a different, uh, point of view, so I'm like, who's gonna do it? So that's why I created it. When you like watched the Twilight movie, was that after college? What was that? Was that when you like kind of figured out like when you were like watching Twilight? You said was that after college? Oh, oh yeah, that was way after college. <laughs> I'm a vampire. <laughs> you knew my age, yeah. So um, what did you did you do? Did you study anything in like when you went to college that like helped you? Like the like I don't know what you majored in and stuff. Oh yeah, I majored in theater arts. Um, one thing, I'm going to tell you, once I quit college when I got a part in the Spielberg movie. I thought it was going to be Denzel. Um, so I became a broker, but that being a, a broker pretty much paid for everything I've done in the insurance industry, but it's not what I really love to do. I mean, the entertainment is what I always loved. Um, acting I always loved, but certain things, the reason that kind of threw me off, I didn't want to be in acting anymore. Now with this, what I'm doing now, when a movie happens, whoever's gonna play those characters, they're gonna be very successful. Um, so, I'm trying to, yeah, so, <laughs> if that makes sense. Anyone else? Oh, when you decided to self-publish the book, how did you originally like get the word out for it? Uh, I got the word out through, first it started out with Facebook, there was an Instagram at the time, and just friends and, and family kind of like, kind of slowly spread out like that. But when I had the book signing at the Grove, uh, with um, day after William Shatner, that's how I was like, wow, the universe was talking to me, I felt. I'm literally named after Leonard Nimoy. William Shatner had his book signing, his banner next to my banner. The next day was, was Frank Miller. He wrote The Dark Knight. Stan Lee was there. So I'm in the middle of this guy who self-published this book through no big huge, five big publishing houses, I'm in the middle of all these iconic people. And that's what really lit that fire for me to like, to really 
go to the next step. Like with Comic-Con, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew I had to create the closest thing uh, wardrobe to how the characters looked in the book. And when I'd done that, and when I received the, the acknowledgement from people from Comic-Con in San Diego, that's when I knew I had something. It was tangible, because when they saw it, that's when I knew I had something. And that's what sparked me to decide to travel around the world. Anyone else? Yeah. You plan to write more in the future? Yes, I'm planning to write more in the future. Um, when, I'm not sure, because right now I'm working on a script for the film. Um, I'm not going to put the documentary out until after the film is done. I'm going to do all that first, so my story is kind of still, I guess I'm still telling my, my story, my journey. And once the film happens, then I think the documentary will be ready to go. Anyone else? So how do you feel overall from what you saw? Interested to read the series. Thank you, thank you. Well, that's I wrote it to inspire. Hearing your voice, you kind of probably could be one of the characters in the book. I can't see your face, but the match, but I can see your hair. You probably one of the characters are written. Based on everything we've learned about digital marketing, do you guys have any suggestions for him about things that he could do to help boost his marketing and get new audiences? I think using social media to target like younger audiences or like what sets your book apart from other books like Harry Potter and stuff like that would be very interesting. That's kind of why like I would be interested in reading the book because of like what you said about his struggles, like how it's more real. I think you should advertise that a lot more. I think it'd be very beneficial. Thank you. I'm, I'm gonna definitely do that. Um, there's a way to work with like certain um, social media platforms like Instagram or maybe TikTok. I'm more familiar with like Instagram mm -hmm. where you can pay for your um, posts on social media to go toward a certain demographic. Um, like I've helped out this like social media company that targets like middle-aged women who are about like a certain age from a certain area. And you can literally select like what area you want to target, what age range of people, and it'll, if you pay like a certain amount every month or something, it can like advertise to those specific people and then like they end up branching out and like talking to more people mm -hmm. do that and like finding like yeah just whoever is younger whoever would cater to that audience of people who are going to read your book yeah i've do, i've done that in the past yeah. i just haven't been proactive with it which i sh i should be so thank you i'm going to do that too also you could be like partners with booktubers and youtube they uh, call themselves like booktubers, I think. Uh, they publish videos like every month, every week, uh, and they talk about the books that they read. Uh, some of them has a lot of followers, and maybe you could like partner with them. That's a good idea. I had, in the past, I had a, a few. Um, I met one on Goodreads. I need to do that more too. Yes, you're, you're correct. I need to be more proactive with that. Also, like, I saw that you did, like, the TikToks, and definitely, like, I feel like TikTok's so popular now, and, like, all age groups are there, and even, like, posting, like, I don't know if you've already done this, but, like, when you, like, post videos, you can, like, kind of, like, short clips of, like, what the book's about, and then, like, using, like, specific hashtags, mm -hmm. like, you said, like, there's, like, book talk, like, there's so many, like, kind of TikTok, like, what people are interested in, so I definitely think, like, you start using, like, a lot of hashtags and things to reach, like, a certain group. I think you're right. Another thing I need to do, I need to hire models like like young adults, like with the book, and have them like um, hashtag on the TikTok. I think that will work. Yes. Um, kind of going off what you said about TikTok, I think if you do stuff like, I mean, I don't know exactly all what you have on there, but if you do stuff like day in the life of a writer or like write a script with me or stuff like that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think people are really interested in that, so I think that would kind of help build their following on there. Okay, thank you. That's a good idea. I, I definitely would do that. Like I was thinking, someone mentioned how much time you, you have um, to focus on doing certain things. That's I need to make time out for that too. I need to carve time to do a little bit more social media because right now my whole focus now is getting this script done and and get the funding and the cast and all of that going. Um, so thank you. That's all. That's all good. I good info.
And actually, I had the deck. If you saw the deck, you, I think you'll be amazed. I'd have to make some changes, but I, I didn't have it on here. If you saw what the characters, kind of what they look like, like the cast will look like, you'll be surprised when you see it. It's so diverse. I probably could share that for. Yeah, if you want. Yeah, I have a copy of it. Yeah, I'm trying to say the other deck I have. Um, I didn't show that one. I'll, I'll share it with you, kind of give you a general idea. Uh, 